All right, welcome. This is a response to David K. Bernard's uh, statement, in short, a, a problem for Trinitarians. Let me play it and uh, we'll get to it. Or equals the Son. We're saying the Father is in the Son because oh. Son refers to God as He's manifested in the flesh. Mm. This this is a problem right here to begin with. To say that the Father is in the Son is true in one sense, but not in another. Because the doctrine of the Trinity is that the Father, Son, Holy Spirit all are the one being who is God, then to say that one is in the other makes sense. It's called perichoresis, which is a mutual indwelling of each member of the Godhead in uh, each of the other. That's called, uh, like I said, perichoresis. This is just part of the doctrine of the Trinity. If he were to, however, say that the Father is indwelling the Son, then we don't have a in true incarnation of the word becoming flesh. What we have is a father indwelling a human body. If that's what he's getting at, let's see. The son was mm. born. The son died. Mm -hmm. Well, even Trinitarians have a problem here because they don't believe the second person of the Trinity that's was born or died. That's incorrect. We do believe the second person of the Trinity was born and died. But let me explain. The second person of the Trinity, uh, the word, uh, Jesus, became flesh and and uh, dwelt among us. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. That's John 1.1. 1, 1. And, in, uh, and in verse 14, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So we believe that. And of course, that's Jesus. And well, he died on the cross. So we believe that. But also, we have to understand that in the doctrine of uh, Jesus, there is the teaching called the hypostatic union which is that Jesus is one person with two natures, one person with two natures, a divine nature and a human nature. So Jesus said, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the earth. Jesus says, I am thirsty. So Jesus claimed, the one person Jesus claimed the attributes of both natures, a divine nature and the human nature. That's what he did. We call this the hypostatic union. Furthermore, there's another doctrine called the communication of the properties. And what this means is, is that even though Jesus has one, uh, you know, one he's uh, one person with two natures, as I've already described, that the attributes of both natures are ascribed to the single person. So Jesus says, I'm thirsty. Jesus says, I'll be with you always. He's claiming the attributes of both natures. So what we would say is, well, yeah, God died, but not in the sense that the divine nature died, but the person of Christ on the cross died. And since the attributes of both natures are ascribed to that single person, then we would say that this sacrifice is a divine value. And in that sense, we'd say God died on the cross. Uh, you're dealing with human flesh. Yes. So I would say yes. uh, the prayers of Christ are, are a greater problem for Trinitarians if they try to use that to prove the Trinity. Mm -hmm. Because if their second person is inferior, seeking help, seeking yeah. guidance. Yeah. We don't teach that uh, at Trinitarians. I'm a Trinitarian, of course. And you said if Trinitarians teach that Jesus is inferior, we don't teach that Jesus was inferior. We teach that Jesus was made Lord in the angels, Hebrews 2, 9, and that he was uh, made under the law, Galatians 4, 4. But because he is God in flesh, He's not inferior. So uh, Mr. Bernard is misrepresenting the doctrine of the Trinity. He doesn't seem to really understand what it is. It proves too much. It proves, too much. It proves he's not co-equal. But rather, this is dealing with the incarnation, showing that Jesus as an authentic human being related to God, just as we relate to God. We're not... But of course, uh, Jesus would relate to God as we do because he was made under the law. Galatians 4.4, 4, he's fully a man. And so he had to obey the law. He had to pray to God the Father. That's what he would do. So in my uh, assessment, uh, Mr. Bernard does not understand the doctrine of the Trinity, and he fails to understand the hypostatic union, the two natures of Christ and the one person. And he fails to understand the communication of the properties, which is that the attributes of both natures are ascribed to the single person. Um I have suggested to many oneness people, as well as atheists and others, that uh, I'd be willing to uh, teach them what our doctrine really is, not what it is not, so they don't misrepresent it. Uh, I offered to, I personally talked to David Bernard when he was here in Idaho, and I asked him to uh, be involved with the debate with me on the nature and the doctrine of the Trinity, if it was true or not. He declined. Uh, we then uh, agreed, he possibly agreed to uh, do a written debate. He then declined out of that as well. So, uh, you know, I, I, I've talked to him, I've met him, and in my opinion, uh, from this, he doesn't understand the doctrine of the Trinity, the hypostatic union, and maybe that's why he didn't want to debate me. I don't know because I know the topic, I know the doctrine, I can defend it from scripture. Uh, David K. Bernard is not teaching the truth. He is teaching a false God and a false gospel.